when you get into things like window managers and the tools that go along with them, things like Rofi and stuff like that, or if you're getting into using the terminal or command line and you're starting using command line applications, a lot of those applications and window managers come with things called dot files. Now, the reason why we call them dot files is because they usually reside in some place inside your home directory with a period at the beginning of the directory name. And basically all that does is allows your system to consider that folder hidden. So when you do just a regular ls in a terminal, all of your dot files are hidden away. You don't actually see them, even though they still exist. So when you hear somebody call things dot files, basically what they're talking about is the configuration files for their particular setup. So for me personally, I manage my dot files in a very manual way. It's not the most convenient or efficient way of managing dot files. However, it works for me. Now, what I thought I'd do today is to kind of walk you through how I manage my dot files and how it enables me to move from one distro to the next fairly easily. So let's go ahead and jump in. So all of my dot files reside in a single Git repository on my computer called my repo. Now, Everything that you see here isn't necessarily anything that I use anymore, but a lot of the stuff I still do use. And I like to keep the things that I use, especially if I've spent time configuring them or ricing them or whatever. So something like Xmonad, I don't use it anymore, but I've spent some time in it and I've done some custom work there. So I've kept those dot files in case I ever decide I want to come back to it. Same thing with like WM or Openbox. Those things are things that I don't really use anymore, but I've kept the dot files, and if I ever choose to return to them, I still have that stuff available for me to use. Things like Qt Browser, Qtile, Ranger, and stuff like that are things that I use all the time. So basically what I can do is I can download my repository. I think it's called my dots on GitLab, but I always rename it to my repo on my system. And it gives me this directory full of all my dot files. Now, obviously by default, these directories are fairly useless because the applications that they relate to don't actually know to look in this directory. And I don't really want them to look in this directory anyways. I don't need them to be configured in a way to look in this particular place. I just want them to look in the default place. The question then becomes, how do I get, say, i3 to know that my configuration file resides in this directory and not in .config when I don't really want to move my i3 folder into .config? Well, the answer is symlinks. Now, if you've never used symlinks before, the idea basically is you use a command called ln, something like this, and what it will do is create a shortcut in a particular directory. So, so for example, let's just say I wanted to create a shortcut or a symlink in this case for herpsluftwm. I could do so by doing ln dash s and then slash home dr mdub my repo herpsluft and then I would declare the place where I want the directory to be stored or in this case not directory but symlink and in this case I want to be tilde slash dot config. So I hit enter and that would be done. Now here's what that looks like if I go into cd dot config and do an ls here, you'll see now that there are some folders here that are colored a little bit differently. Now, your colors may be a little bit different because this just happens to match my theme, but they're usually colored a little bit differently. The blue ones in this case are all symlinks, and there's the herpsluft wm1 that we just created. So now I could go into herpsluft wm in my repo, like so, and create a test file. So just touch test.txt like so, and then if I go back over here to this one and cd into herpsloft, you would now see test.txt right here, even though technically this directory does not reside in .config, it's actually just a shortcut. So that's the main way I manage my dot .files. All of my configuration files live in this repository right here. I make all of my changes to i3, polybar, whatever, right here in this directory, and those changes get passed on through to their sh respective shortcuts in .config or wherever those programs are supposed to look for their configuration files. Now, when I said earlier that this is the probably least efficient way of managing your, your dot .files, that's because that's true. There are several other ways that you can manage these. And 
there are actually programs out there that will allow you to kind of automate the management of your dot files, things like Yadam and things like that. I don't really like those tools. I like being able to have complete control over my dot files and how they're uploaded to get, when they're uploaded to get, how they're sent to different places and stuff like that. So I want to have all that control and basically what that means is that managing them manually is the best way for me. Now, when I switch to another distro, I can either download my repository and then do a symlink manually one by one by one for each program that I'm going to use, or I can write a script, which I have done. Let me show you that. Now, this particular script is actually for Arch Linux, so I don't actually use this when I'm using Fedora, but when I was using Arch, this was a great way to get all of my setup in one place. Now, this script is up on my GitLab, so if you want to download it, you can just know that it's not tested for anybody else. This was just for me. So basically all this does is it sets some variables, it downloads all the stuff that I need, so things like i3 gaps, Rofi, Caden Live, things like that. And then the real part of this is that it actually downloads all of my dots, changes the name just because I prefer my repo. I don't know why I didn't name it my repo on GitLab, I just didn't. And then what it does is it will actually do all of those sim links for me, one by one by one, without me having to do it at all, which is really nice, right? So I can just run this script. It will download all of the things that I need when I use Arch. It will download all of my dot files. It will create the sim links, and then I'm pretty much set up and ready to go. So that's how I manage my dot files and have a way for me to quickly move my dot files from one distro to another. It's actually fairly simple. It did require some setup on my part, so I had to write that script, even though I'm sure that it's not the most bash and efficient script out there. It's just what I created. And obviously, the dot files themselves require some maintenance. So every once in a while, if I'm in a situation where I'm doing some ricing, which happens quite often, I know you're shocked, I'm creating a new theme for i3 or something like that, I would do all the changes that I need to make or whatever, and then I would upload all that stuff to GitLab so that the next time I move to a different distro or I download a VM or whatever, I have all of the most recent dot files that I need uploaded. Now, like I said, that's a manual process. That's something that I have to do, and that's not going to be for everybody. I know a lot of people prefer to have some of those programs that automatically do that kind of stuff for you. I prefer to have the control of knowing when things are getting updated, what sim links are being created, and so on and so forth. So this is my way of managing my dot files. So I hope that kind of inspired you for your setup, if that helps at all. So if you have comments on this, you can leave those in the comment section below. You can follow me on Twitter, at the LinuxCast. You can follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey. Those links will be in the video description. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash LinuxCast, just like all these fine people. Thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are absolutely amazing people and your support just blows me away so thanks so very much for your support it just it means the world without you the channel just would not be where it is today so thanks so much thanks everybody for watching i'll see you next time